Hey everyone, Ryobi Tools has just announced they're going to be unveiling over 25 new products on December 10th. So of course I had to hit up the patent archives and see what I could find uh, and see if I can predict them early. So let's get down to it. These are the new tools I think Ryobi could be releasing in 2021. So first up is an 18 volt cordless snow shovel. This is a little bit different than most other powered snow shovel designs out there because those ones throw the snow forward. This one actually has an auger that pushes everything to the side. So this is probably best used for narrow areas that you want to clear, like uh, walkways or sidewalks, uh, because it's going to be pushing it to the side and you'll have to move that snow again if you're not pushing it off the edge. Uh, so this is probably for smaller areas, not big wide driveways or patios, um, but good for sidewalks. So this next one's a pretty big deal. It is a cordless track saw system. Similar in concept to the Festool MFT, or the Craig Adaptive Cutting System. You've got a table with dog holes on it that works with a track saw. So the track is able to pivot and miter, so you get different cut angles. It's got a fence you can reference up against uh, for your workpiece, so you can reference up against that fence, choose an angle and cut on that angle. You can also pivot the whole track up to move your workpieces in and out. Uh, and, and it looks like it's gonna have a dedicated track saw on this, um, because there's no under, underneath blade guard, there's no lower blade guard on the drawings, but I don't see a dust port, which is a major thing missing if you're actually going to have a track saw. So I think it's a dedicated saw, not just dropping one of Ryobi's existing circular saws on there, but that's something to watch for. It also looks like Ryobi is looking to get into drywall tools, because uh, I've got a couple here. First off is a cordless corner bead clincher, uh, so instead of having to use a manual mallet in the, the tool, which takes two hands. This one is looks like an airstrike gun with an actuator on it that will crimp the drywall so you only, the drywall corner bead so you only have to use one hand uh, instead of two. Also, as far as drywall tool goes, they have a pneumatic texture gun here. Uh, it does mention it's possible it could be run off a battery compressor, but I bet that's unlikely based on the, the air output you'll need for a texture gun. There's also a drywall taping tool. It doesn't look like this one is powered. Uh, and their patent involves the center of gravity of this thing. You load it up with mud and you run your tape through the center so it automatically applies mud to the tape as you put it on the wall. I think a lot of people are going to be excited about this next one. It is a robotic lawnmower based on their 40 volt outdoor platform. So this thing navigates via an onboard IMU, that's an inertial measurement unit, uh, and possibly GPS, but it doesn't say for sure it's going to use GPS. So it's going to use LiDAR, uh, a vision system, uh, an odometer on the wheels, and a gyroscope to tell which direction it's pointing and how fast it's turning and all of that. So that means there are going to be no boundary wires to bury, uh, which is a big upfront overhead uh, in, in work for most robotic lawnmowers. The blade has a center disc with three pivoting blades on the very end. So if you strike something hard like a rock, it's not going to ruin the whole thing. The blades will pivot out of the way. It also includes a gaming style controller for you to run it around the perimeter first so it knows where to cut and where to stop. And from everything this looks like, it's going to run off the 40 volt batteries. I didn't see any mention for an 18 volt version. This next one is a cordless auger for planting plants and digging small fence post holes. So it's got a six inch wide auger on it. It runs on their 18 volt platform with a brushless motor. It has got an auto forward and reverse. So if you hold down the trigger and push down, it will spin and, pull and dig downwards. If you hold the trigger and pull up, it will, it will reverse motion and go back if you get stuck. Uh, also, it is currently available in Australia, but I found a U.S. patent for this as well, which means it may be coming to the U.S. Uh, it's also got electronic anti-kickback, so if it senses it's rotating on you, uh, it will stop instead of just spinning out of control. There's also a gutter cleaner patent, which looks like it attaches to Ryobi's expandit system for their yard tools. So that you use that power head and it has a nice long pole that sticks up into the gutter and a wheel that runs around along the edge of the gutter and it will either blow out everything or it can have a vacuum function where it sucks debris out of there as well. There's also a mirror that can be attached to it so you can see down in your gutters without having to get up in a ladder. This next one I'm pretty excited about it is a cordless 18 volt paint sprayer. This paint sprayer uses an attached reservoir on the back of the unit and that can be removed and a garden hose can be attached to clean it out. So this is, the patent's all about how easy it is to clean this thing by just hooking up a garden hose and running water through the rest of it. Uh, now, Ryobi also has had other cordless paint sprayers in the past that didn't have great reviews. This looks to be a completely new design though and the patent was published in 2020. Next up is a motion tracking tripod. So the idea with this is you put something like a fan or a work light on it and it's got a camera in it that tracks you as you work and move. 
and will follow you with that light source or with that breeze. It looks like it doesn't have a Ryobi battery connection, but it is definitely a Ryobi floodlight that is pictured in this patent design. So I'm not sure if this is a heart tools design or a rigid one, uh, or possibly a Ryobi or all three. They might come out with the same thing on each platform. The basic design, it's got a turntable with a motor. It mentions it, it definitely does yaw back and forth. It might be able to do pitch as well up and down. It also will have a Wi-Fi or Bluetooth connection for connecting to an app on your phone, as well as a user interface on the thing. All right, huge news for DIYers, uh, pocket hole jigs. Craig has probably been the undisputed king of when you say pocket hole jig, that's what you think of. Ryobi looks like they're getting into the game as well. Their version is a little bit different. Instead of lifting up the insert, it actually pivots for different thicknesses of wood. So this design, it's, it's very similar to the, the Craig K4 or K5 uh, in having a clamp that you just stick the workpiece in, clamp it down uh, to the proper thickness, and then adjust your depth of your stop collar. This has an automatic depth adjustment setting. You slide the bit in and tighten the collar down where it stops. It's got a built-in dust collection port. Uh, it does look like it might be a little bit awkward for that pull handle coming out towards you, but at least the clamp is on the side that you're going to drill from, unlike the Craig K4. Uh, and that's the lesson that Craig learned moving to the K5 is put the clamp on the same side you're gonna be standing on. There's also a mobile pocket hole jig design that they have that's really meant for just one hole or somewhere where you can't take the whole workpiece off and fit it in the jig. Uh, so this one goes directly on the workpiece and it's got two uh, referencing pegs, they're calling a fence, that can adjust for different thicknesses of wood so it keeps you at a set distance from the end. That's something the Craig one doesn't have. So in addition to those two pocket hole jigs, Ryobi also has a pocket hole clamp design that is meant to have two functions. So you have pocket hole clamps that can go into the pocket hole and hold the workpiece at a right angle, or you have regular clamps that will clamp the, the whole thing flat. So Ryobi's design is combining these two with one head that pivots up and over this peg. So that's everything, and one quick disclaimer, uh, this, these patents are all held by TTI, uh, which owns Milwaukee, Rigid, and Ryobi tools. Milwaukee tools are generally separate in their patents, but Rigid and Ryobi both fall under the TTI group, uh, as well as heart tools as well. So it's possible some of these were Rigid or heart tools, um, but from the batteries on most of these and some of the drawings, I'm pretty confident most of them are Ryobi. And of course, these are just patents, so that doesn't mean Ryobi is ever going to come out with these tools, but it does mean they've done some engineering development and paid for the patent application. So they do have some work invested in these designs. It doesn't mean they'll make it to market, though. So thanks for watching. If you want to chime in below and tell me what you're hoping for, I'd love to hear it, uh, or what you're most excited about about what I covered.